Okay, good evening, everybody. It's Stephanie. We have a small group tonight. So April and I are actually going to turn this into a little bit of distributor training from the director and senior director um, viewpoint in hopes that some of you um, take a listen to it. So we're going to make it kind of quick and easy to follow. Um, and what we were going to do first is if you were on our last training, we talked about power hours. And um, let me go back to my notes. So power hour was like a philosophy that I'm sure has been around for forever. Um, but when I was at New Directors Conference, they talked about it and it kind of um, struck a chord with me. And I thought, I really do not do a good job at this and I need to at least try to do a better job. So power hour as a review is a set time that um, must be an hour of proactive time. So in other words, you already know what you're going to be doing during that time. It doesn't have to be an hour. It can be 20 minutes. It can be two hours. Um, but you're not going to be planning in that hour. So in other words, you're not going to sit down like I was so guilty of doing many times and still have my moments. During my set aside Shackley power hour time, you're not going to sit down and say, okay, in this half hour, I want to do A, B, and C. You're already going to know what you're going to do. And it doesn't have to be anything brain busting. It could be some, um, you could be following up with myself or with April about something we talked about, or you could be following up with anyone who's made a recent order or has ordered something new. You could be um, writing down ideas for events you have that you might want to run by April and I or stuff that we could do together with you. Invite people to take the health print, follow up from, from the health prints. Um, you could save tools and images from your Shackley login in the back office to your computer because I know some of you are starting to collect information and keep it in folders. Joan, I know you're doing that. So that could be something you could even do during your power hour. So anyways, the focus is on activity and not planning. So with that in mind, April and I are going to be very transparent in how our power hours have been going. April, do you want to start or do you want me to start? No, sure. Um, mine have not been great. I will be very <laughs> transparent. <laughs> what I have, where and where I have failed is exactly with what Stephanie said, like I will, I will make the time to sit down and, and work my business, but it's kind of when I sit down, I, I haven't made the plan as to what am I going to do during that hour prior to. So um, that's where I have failed. I haven't set that time aside to plan out what I was going to do during those times. Um, I did a couple of times and then it was successful, but when I don't, I sit down and then I get very overwhelmed by everything else, like your, your bills that you see sitting there or, you know, other, other things that may not even necessarily be quote unquote Shackley related. Um, I find myself pulled in different directions where if I just have it there in front of me, knowing what I'm supposed to do, you know, you can rock through it, even if you don't spend the entire hour, like Stephanie said, doing it. So, um, but when I had it down in terms of a follow up or something like that, um, it makes it much easier too, because you're, you're so much more focused in on what it is you need to do during that time. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> That's so, yeah. so I had, um, gosh, it's probably been multiple weeks. I don't remember when we did the last one, the end of May. Um, so I had my first power hour. I planned to do a certain night and I ne never did it. I did it a different night, <laughs> which threw me off because, um, I was trying to be all intentional about the time that I picked and it just did not work. Mm -hmm. And then um, I think the next week it was more like a power 30 minutes a couple times and I just did follow-ups. And then this last Monday, I probably had my most successful one, which I know is not um, feasible for everyone, but I think that's the glory of the power hour is you work it into how your life is run at the moment. My husband's off on Mondays, and um, I got up around 6.15, 6.30 or something, and I went straight to my little office and um, had two hours of, the kids weren't up, he wasn't up, I shut my door, 
Um, I had a list, had already made a list of some people I wanted to follow up with who had just made recent orders and a few people who I just needed to follow up with because they joined, they were new members who joined a while ago and I wanted to do a, you know, hey, how's it going? Do you have any questions? Um, and then I also did some health print follow-ups for some of my distributors, Danita and Kim, who um, I had done follow-ups a couple weeks ago and haven't heard anything back. So I did a second round of follow-ups on those folks. Um, yeah, so, and then I scheduled, you know, got the meeting scheduled for this and sent out the email about this training. So I actually was able to get a ton done in those two hours. And it's funny because I felt like my list was really long, but it went really, really fast. Uh -huh. um, so, so far that has worked for me. And I think on Mondays that I do not work at the hospital, I'm going to do that. Like a two hour thing on Monday morning, or at least an hour on Monday morning. And we'll see if it stays, we'll see if it stays as well as it did that time. And Stephanie, when you were following up with your, this might be helpful to people too, when you were following up with those people that you said, you know, had placed orders or joined recently, um, like were you just following up with them, checking in via email or how yes. were you doing that? Yes, email, because I wasn't going to call them obviously that right. early and I was not going to do a Facebook message because there are people who keep them on by their beds or you know, everyone does it different. I didn't want to ding anybody at 6.45 in the morning and freak them out. So I did emails. Yeah. And um, yeah, like I had one old coworker who wanted, who ordered Basic H because she wanted to try like the non-toxic cleaning approach. And she has a little one. And I sent her a quick message like, hey, how's the Basic H going? Um, let me know if you need any more like how-to information. I'd already sent her a bunch of stuff. And she emailed me back later Monday morning. And she was like, it's going great. I love it. Thanks for checking in. So, you know, I haven't heard back from everybody. And I think that goes along with just like the whole follow up. Like it takes multiple, multiple, multiple follow ups sometimes for folks to even engage back with you. You know, when you're doing like a cold call type of thing, I think it's the same way sometimes with new members is people are busy and I figure I just want to keep my, let them know I'm still around. It's not, you know, about that, getting that sale and then being done. Yeah. So, yeah, I thought, whatever, I'll send them all emails and, and we'll see what happens. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so then I think, um, well, I was going to do, I put in my little agenda that I was going to do a little brief Martha Wilmore Nutrition Conference um, review. But I'm sitting here looking at my notes. I have a ton of fun facts written. Um, but maybe, April, since you and I were there, maybe we should just, like, say what we thought. I don't know, just in general. Or I don't know if you have something that stuck out to you. Um, what I like about Martha Wilmore, if you ever have the chance to go listen to her, is that um, she's just so knowledgeable about everything, I feel like. Um, so if you get the chance to bring someone, like I know, um, Stephanie, um, was able to bring someone and it just, um, I think people are so enlightened by her information because it's so much more than just Shackley information. It's, yeah. she just has a lot of information in general. And, um, she put up one slide. I know that I took note of that, um, talked about how many different, it was supplements. It was including needles and wasn't it children's supplements too it was across the board that tests were done oh yeah um, it was like 380 multivitamins yes. but women and children tested positive for lead and they're still allowed to be sold yes. because they haven't reached that like you know the crazy some that crazy, crazy level. yeah yep exactly and they um you, so you can go on, I think it's the FDA's website, isn't it? Where you can get a list of these that contain yeah. that. They're not going to do anything about it or put it out. Yeah. There, you know, but you can go to the site and see it. Um, so I thought that was um, very interesting. And she also talked a lot about some of the, some of the things that are in some of our different products. Um, she talked about what is in our, um, our blood pressure product and, um, things that are in like the why CoQ10 is important and yeah. what is 
the the thing that is actually in our blood pressure product and, and why it makes a difference. Um, and, you know, I, I like to hear it for, because my husband recently had a little bit of high blood pressure. And so it's just things that I could learn because it was things that I didn't realize that, oh, so that's why that's in there. And not only does it make it more knowledgeable for, for you, for your own family, but then, you know, you have that information in your head then for when you're talking with, with other people. Because I'm not a medical expert or nutrition expert, and you don't have to be. But especially when you go to these things, it's, it's great to pick up those little tidbits um, that you can then share with other people. Yeah, I'm looking here at my stuff, and um, I think I loved just some of the, I mean, it all was awesome. Like, all of it was awesome. I think when she was going into just like basic anatomy, that isn't, I mean, it, it isn't, it isn't basic. Like we all just sit around and know this, but it makes you think of the body as such a broader thing. Like we have 60 to a hundred trillion cells who need nutrition. Um, the brain uses 20 to 30% of our calories we consume. Um, your bloodstream needs a smorgasbord of nutrients, which I think that was one of my most favorite things she said, because you know, I think a lot of times we get questions like, well, why do I need to take everything that's in the vitalizer if it has like 150% of this and 200% of this? And I know one answer to that is, you know, the FDA makes um, dietary values based on like, just like preventing those archaic things like, um, what is it, rickets or something? And, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, things that we don't think of that like we have issues with. So they're making like these daily value percentages based on like archaic diseases. And she, when she said like, you have to visualize like your bloodstream is a smorgasbord of nutrients. So like your body needs more than like, obviously needs more than what's in your diet. Cause I, I don't eat perfect. And, you know, it just like how normal is um normal in north america i know she said is like it's a we're like a disease care system not a health care system so some of those statements she made just you know you hear them kind of off and on but then to sit there and, and hear her say that and give scientific reasons behind it was really cool and then that whole that whole part about like the chemicals in the um household cleaners and how they can cause hormonal issues like was way interesting to me because i think about a lot of times I can think of some friends who are having like, you know, the PMS, PCOS. I mean, not that it always has to do with chemicals, but it makes you wonder if some of that stuff could be altered or how many more people, if they just switch to toxic free cleaners, differences that it could make in their lives. Right. But, um, I don't know. It was just, that was really interesting. And then let me see. Oh, yeah, here's that fact. All 320 brands of the vitamins that were tested for lead contamination by the FDA are still sold on the shelves, mm -hmm. which is just totally, um, totally crazy. Yeah. And then um, the average of 287 contaminants have been found in the cord blood of infants. You know, just I just like how she went from all the different stages of life, and and really it wasn't it wasn't all Shackley. You know, a lot of it was just the body in general, which was really neat to sit and listen to. And why you need some of the nutrients that you need. Yeah, yeah. And it's not because Shackley sells it; it's no. just because you do. Which you know, and I appreciated. Like I've now become a sprouter. We just had our first mung bean sprouts that we ate today. I love it. Yes. And so I have my alfalfa sprouts ready in they're soaking now. So like I learned, you know, she didn't talk about sprouting much, but like, I mean, I have always liked the bean sprouts on the salad bar and, wow. but I didn't realize like how full of protein they are. And since they're raw, they aren't, they're amino acids and the protein and the enzymes aren't destroyed. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is really cool. Yeah. So, yeah, I really liked Martha. I think anyone can ever see her again. And then her whole thing about the um, 75 scientists that are employed at Shackley full-time and how it's the largest scientific research team in the entire world for like a, a wellness company. Yes. Um, which is, I think, a fact that you don't 
I think it gets actually, when they talk about the Shackley difference, I almost think Shackley needs to mention that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So many other places will just focus more on the marketing or yeah. you know, sales, that side of thing. Yeah, definitely. So I think that was our little Martha recap. And then um, April and I wanted to go through the memory jogger. So um, how about I do this, April, then you want to talk about the catalog? Yeah. Okay. Right. So for anyone who's watching this, this I've emailed everybody, but I can email you again. Just ask. Um, but this is something that I have printed out right next to me right now. I've done it. I did a version of this a long time ago. Um, and I need to do it again for multiple reasons because I want to find folks who want to, um, well, we all know people who want to feel better. So I want to find more of those folks because I know they're probably right around me and I'm missing them. And then I'm also always wanting to look for folks who might be a good fit for my team. So, and that's kind of the fun part about Shackley is you can kind of pick who you want to work with. Um, and a lot of times if you're friends, then you already know you like the person and you get along and you probably have some things in common. So it's kind of like a plus plus. And then um, some people are just attracted to the business model of Shackley. So it's kind of a cool way to jog your mind because I think um, I talked to a few people, um, Aaron and Joan and I know Kim and I have talked and um, I think a lot of people, and I still do this too, get caught on, well, I don't know who to talk to and I don't know how to talk to them. So this is um, a good way to kind of sit in a quiet room. You could do this during a power hour for like a half hour. And you, this gives you some ways or some like um, memory joggers, I guess, to think of people. So the way Shackley does this is they say to use the tool to discover how many people you already know. And then after you create your list, go through and identify 25 people who you'd like to have on your team. So for um, folks under me, um, well, and April, so if you, you know, there's different parts of Shackley. You have more of the business part and you have more of the using the product part. And I know a few people under me would really like to get to a point where they're at a business rank. So in order to do that, you really have to think about people who might be interested in distributing so that they can earn money and therefore help you earn money and perks. So one way to do this is to go through, um, identify people that you know in all these different categories, and then go back through and put a star next to 25 people who you think, hey, they might actually be interested in the business side. Now, I know that, again, a lot of my people are just trying to figure out how to get members to use, but you always should think about the building aspect too. So anyways, this is, um, I like how it's set up because it goes from who do I know who as far as um, like personality traits or hobbies all the way to occupations. So um, I like these, you know, is not afraid to try new things, loves people, deals with the public, is a professional, um, is considered a leader. I, as I'm going through this, I can think of people in my mind who I haven't even talked to who I need to just write their names down. So what you want to do is take this paper and just write names next to these. And, you know, don't pressurize it if you, you're not on a time limit, but if you can't think of somebody, just keep going up and down the columns till you think of people. Um, who do I know who, and these are a lot of things related to, you know, business. People are looking for ways to work, make incomes and not have to work, you know, 60 hours a week. Um, people who are old friends, appraised your home, your accountant, your pharmacist, your insurance agent, your florist, a dentist, a paper delivery person, a um, mail delivery person. I mean, heck, you could leave a little sample of energizing tea with your business card out for your mail carrier. You never know where that could take you. Um, people who sell specific items, your relatives. Sometimes it's easier 
sometimes it's easier to start with your family. Sometimes it's harder. Everybody knows their family dynamics. Um, I do think sometimes it's easier to practice certain scripts, like with certain relatives, again, depending on whatever your relationship is like with them. Um, mm -hmm. Think about people you know who do all these different occupations. So just go down and write names next to them. You could try to do one per um, title or topic, but if you have a few, that's fine because as you're going through, you'll be thinking of people that you probably have never even thought of in the past. And you don't have to sit and think, oh, but they would never, they would never want to try Shackley or they would never even talk to me. I have people who are members who never in a million years would I have ever thought would have be interested in Shackley or even tried anything Shackley. So you don't ever want to rule anyone out. Um, and then here That's we go, so another funny. page. I will say that is very hard to do. It is. These lists to not let your reasoning part of your brain start to interfere. It is. <laughs> and say, no, don't put them down, you know, because I've definitely been through that before. But try, and especially during your, you know, first round of things, just, just try and let them flow. Even if you've mentioned Shackley to them maybe in the past, just go ahead and put them down again and then kind of, you know, see how you can wrap it around and um, speak with them again maybe in a different way. Yeah, and maybe not even think about it like Shackley related. Just think about it like very black and white. Who do I, do I know someone who is A? Mm -hmm. And just write the names down and don't yeah. even think of why you're writing it because like then you will, you'll start to talk yourself out of it. Well, I can't write down this person because they would just laugh at me. Yeah. You know, you would, um, you never would, you'd set yourself up for failure every time. So then this part, uh, I would say for the, for the purpose of keeping it basic to kind of, if you're listening to this, watching this, maybe do you agree, April, kind of look, skip this part? Yeah, I would right now. Just start yeah. with the basics of, of those, mm -hmm. getting people's names down for that list. Yeah. And then what you would do after you get your names, and you could even do something like go through it one day in like blue pen and then go through it another day in black pen. I mean, you could do it however you want, depending on if you even care, if you think about it in different, in terms of when you've thought of these people. But then what we want to do is contact them. And that is where April and I can help. Um, this is adding names to build your list. So this would be like, if you are contacting your hairdresser, you write her name down. Um, I don't know why the word contacts there. Do you know, April? That might be your phone <laughs> number. Oh, or yeah. Or something. And then when you contacted them, and the follow-up is use share build. That's what USB is. So, But for right now, it should just be if you, I'd say, focus on the just the initial contact. Um, but again, this is the, this is where April and I can help um, once you get your list because this right here is a good way to track, um, which goes right into I'm going to come back up here using the health print. So this is a great way to answer the questions I was getting of how do I find these people, what do I say, or how do I contact them. Um, I wrote this down. So let's say we come up with our list, then we can, depending on how you know them, whether it's, you know, you contact, you talk to them via email or via phone, um, we want to get in touch with them and give them a very short blurb about, you know, you're partnering with a company, a wellness company called Shackley. They've been around for however long and you, you really love the products and and you were curious if you sent them a personalized health assessment that it's free, there's no catch, if they would just take, you know, five minutes to fill it out because you're trying to really just get the word out about Shackley. And, you know, you can just say something like, no pressure, no sales pitch. I just want to kind of see what you think about this health assessment. Um, the key, though, is don't send the health print if you're not going to follow up or 
Um, if you're not going to, I don't know how to word it. If you don't have any intention to um, like even want to have a conversation with them about it. Now that's where April and I can help as your upline, because obviously we want to have a relationship with your members too and help. Um, so it's just that whole follow-up is the key. Um, like I know I've been doing follow-ups for Danita mm -hmm. and Kim and it's totally fine. I, you know, it's something where we want to just keep an open line of communication. So I know who's, um, who you've sent them to. And then, um, if you've already followed up with them, what they've said so that I'm not, you know, repeating the whole spiel over again. Yeah. Um, and then you want to think of it as sharing, not as selling, because Shackley is definitely a relationship business. You want to build a relationship with them. I know Danita and I have talked about, because she's so passionate about the products, as, as her concern was, how do I not, you know, just start vomiting? Well, I think you need to try Vitalizer and Protein. And so we talked about how we want to she's in a situation where she's working at a gym and she has clients and she's had a lot of conversations with people. So she already has a relationship. So what we talked about was her sending the health print and saying, you know, I'm going to review it and then we'll chat with you about it. And then it's all about asking the other person, the questions, like questions to understand why maybe they chose weight loss and energy and sleep better sleep as their top three. And you kind of listen and then you just go from there. So you want to make sure you listen and like um, validate, you know, their feelings or their questions or their concerns. And then you can kind of start to talk about how Shackley can help. And sometimes less is more in the beginning, you know, maybe chit chat a little and then send them some information later on. Um, I think it's easy to want to just throw, you know, the life shake and the vitally and the stress relief at them we get really excited because I know I've done that in the past, but I've found that if I just kind of go at it a little gradu more gradually, then people really understand that I care about, I really care about them and it isn't so much about, you know, if I'm going to have them say yes to the family life shake cup or something. And with the health print, the nice thing is that it, I mean, if you, you can keep using the words too. So, you know, so I, I see this on here. Tell yeah. me. Uh, like tell you can, they you know you can say the term tell me more tell me more about that yeah. um which shows and which i think we all do and we're talking with someone about this like we want to understand more as to um what's going on with them in their world and then um as well it's nice since it does lay out some different product options for them it, it kind of gives you a starting point and if you want to tell them you know i i know it recommended these for you and that you know this was what you know, the category you mentioned maybe that you would be within your budget, I'd be happy to, and if, you know, if they're not sure and they have known nothing about those products, then you can also write, like Stephanie said, just offer to send them more information about that. Or, you know, if it's Vitalizer, send them one strip of the Vitalizer so they can try it. Um, but, you know, just sending them information on that. And then that, again, that gives you another reason to follow back up with them after you sent them the information um, too. But I, I just had someone that took it, that already knew he was interested in weight loss, um, but he was willing to spend the money on his health right now. Um, he wanted to invest in himself. And so it recommended the turnaround kit for him. And that's the route that he went, even though we have the special going on right now in June of the starter kit he was interested in the turnaround kit. He wanted the whole thing. He wanted to go all in. And then of course, right now with the, the advanced program, they're offering a, a free product that goes along with their health goal as well as the free shipping. So he was able to take advantage of that. So sometimes just kind of knowing, um, and, and if I didn't have that health print that he was willing to do that, then I, I probably would have jumped in with the, the starter kit right? Because yeah. it is a great deal and everything, but his goal was to really go all in and he wanted to go all in with the turnaround kit. So it kind of gives you a good snapshot of where people are at and where their minds are at. Yeah. And I think, um, I think like it is all about the mindset of like how you really just have to think like you're sharing and you're wanting to help somebody. 
Mm -hmm. Because I think it's really easy to get caught up in, well, I want to give them the starter kit, you know, and then as he's learning more and doing the health print and you're reading it, it's like, well, I don't know. It's, I, I feel like a lot from just as a kind of on the same topic, but not is I think a lot of people get caught up on, I just feel like I'm selling something, but you know, it's that whole set. Like you said, give them a sample of vitalizer and say, Hey, I'll follow up with you in a few days. Like make it very no pressure. Yeah. And like, you know, and like you said, having that health print and referring back to the health print and, and saying like, you know, well, tell me more about this. Because some, you know, one person who has weight loss as a goal, what they might really mean is they want to build more muscle, whereas someone else who might have weight loss as a goal, what they might really mean is I need to lose like 100 pounds. Yeah. So it is all about building that relationship so you can understand. And then you also know how much help and how much like, um, I don't want to call it handholding, but like guiding someone's going to be. Because I've had some people who are like, just help me get started on something and like, I'm going to commit to it. And then you have other people who, you know, have questions about, well, you know, what, and I'm not a nutrition expert by any means, but like, you know, what's a better option than white potatoes with my dinner or you never know the questions you're going to get asked. So I try and think about it. Like I'm telling my friends about the deal at target on the tank tops with all this passion. <laughs> like, right. It's the same. It's just a different topic. But, and then I also think that that module number four, I think it is in the Shackley University is like a must do for anyone who wants to use health print, which health print is such a, a neat tool at our fingertips, but it goes through Shackley University and it really helps you understand why they did it, how they did it. And then like practicing with April and I on, on how to talk to people. Um, like I know Erin and I were talking and she had said, you know, Steph, I was in this perfect situation to just say something about Shaq and I didn't. And I froze up and I said, that's okay. I've done that a million times. I said, don't force it. You know, like next time when you and your runner friends are talking about, you know, what runner people talk about is their, the latest energy drink or a snack that they have before or after running that makes them feel good. Then you just chime in and say, well, I've been, you know, used, I've been drinking this performance stuff, um, you know, for a while. And I, I think like I've noticed my energy is excellent after I run and then you keep it open and someone's bound to say, well, what's that? And you just kind of make it part of your conversation. So, um, which sometimes seems easy to say it's taken me a while and I still struggle with it. So it's, I think an ever evolving um, like learning process. But I do think the memory jugger is good. And I really do. I actually think my next power hour, I am going to sit down and um, do mine. Yeah, yeah myself, myself as well. Because well, I think you do. I think it would, with this business, sometimes you get do get to a point where you're like, hmm. <laughs> You know, yeah. Who else am I going to talk to? Um, especially, you know, if you know, I don't. For me, I know as as a stay at home mom, sometimes that is that is challenging. Oh yeah. I think who else you're going to talk to next? And also, don't get discouraged too if you try and follow up with someone and they don't respond. It's okay. Like yeah, that happened to Steph and I, where you know. You, as long as for me, I think if, as long as you make the effort to to follow up with them and you know let them know you want to follow up with them, that's about all you can do. And in many cases, um, you know, it's it's in the other person's hand to to want that as well. So, um, right. But the most important thing is that you you do that follow up that you are are trying to do that that follow up, or have Stephanie and I help you with that follow up. And I'm looking, as you can see, for a picture, oh, do I not have it, that I took at New Directors Conference of, oh, I think it's on my phone. They, two of the master coordinators did a whole section on go for the no and how you should strive to hear a certain amount of no's versus yeses. Mm -hmm. 
because, you know, let's say your goal for the week is to have three people say yes to Shackley, whether that means they joined or they, you guys, you schedule a time to sit, to talk to them on the phone about something. Well, let's say it's Wednesday and you already have your three yeses, then you just maybe, I would probably do this, kind of just say, well, my work for the week is done. So their mm -hmm. whole thing was, you need to go for the nose, and there's a real short book that mm -hmm. is written about that that I still need to read. It's by my bed. I mean, it's all about striving to hear the no's because that will lead to the yeses. So let's say you want to hear 20 no's. 20 people in a week say, no, I'm not interested right now. Check back with me. Um, no, I use brand X maybe another day or just flat out no. If you are trying to hear 20, 25 no's in a week, the odds are you're gonna hear a handful of yeses in that journey. Mm -hmm. So that was something they said, and then they also piggybacked that off of the follow-ups and how she, it's, um, it was um, Ruth, uh, what's her last name, um, M Midori? I don't think. Or Barb, Barb and um, I forget his name. But she was, and Derek reminded me of this last night, she was asked like fifth, eight, I forget if it was eight times or 15 times, it was something crazy, it might have been 15, 15 times her friend approached her about Shackley, and every time she was like, it's just not the right time in my life right now, I'm just not interested, and finally, on like the 16th time, she's like, you know what, okay, the time is right, I'm going to give this a try, and now they're master coordinators. Oh, wow. Um, and so she was just giving that as an example of, you know, so you reach out to a mom friend who's saying how tired she is all the time and, and keep saying no, keep saying no. You just have to, this is where recording your contacts is great. Um, I have a friend who is my parents' age, who's in the Italian club, and um, she said something to me like a year and a half ago. And so I sent her information about Vitally Gold and the Life Shake and the cleaning products and her, she owns her own catering business and she's got new grandkids. And every time she's like, Stephanie, I'm really busy. I haven't had time to look at anything. I'm always like, Libby, it's fine. I'll just follow up with you in like a month. So it turned into like every three months of follow-up. Well, finally, this last October or something, I sent her something, and next thing I knew, she ordered. She ordered the. She joined on the vitalizing plan. She loves it now. Mm -hmm. um, but it like I probably followed up with her like twenty five times. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna have people who are like, you know what? Don't ever ask me about Shackley again. And you know what? Then just check them off the list and don't bother them because you don't want to make an enemy. I haven't had anyone say that yet. I've had people say now's like not the right time, you know, get back with me in six months, but then you have to make the effort to record that down and actually do it. Mm -hmm. um, which sometimes can be a challenge. I usually have like a running list. Like part of what I also need to do my next power hour is go through my back, go through anyone who hasn't ordered in like 90 days and I need to do like a uh, reach out to them. Mm -hmm. um, but, and I know like a lot of folks under me don't have a ton of members, but you have a few and that's the perfect amount of people to start with. Like your five members, your two members, your one member, your 10 members, just go on a rotating basis. And, you know, I'm already doing follow-ups with a lot of them, but as the person who, who knew them maybe before me, or if we mutually know them, it's still good to hear from you too. Um, I think that's the difference in Shackley is, the people who um, folks are purchasing stuff from really try to stay in contact with them. I think when you have a real small member base in the beginning, it's easier. Mm -hmm, definitely. And then they start to talk to people and you never know who they're going to talk to. Yeah. And as, as you're saying that stuff, I was thinking too, like that in terms of your power hour and follow up and stuff, um, like, especially if you have a small base or even if you don't um, right now, like Stephanie said, going back and looking at who hasn't ordered, or if you just know off the top of your head, Hey, this friend that became a member hasn't ordered. Um, even like, especially in this day and age, I know like um, I have some Shackley branded note cards and um, I was thinking the other day I should just like 
you know, even if you make a plan to do like uh, even one a week to someone, um, but yeah, maybe that's good. And note, handwritten note, and you can even put your business card in there and just say, Hey, you know, or you don't even have to put your business card in there, but just say, you know, I haven't, I just had you on my mind. I haven't heard from you in a while. Just want to let you know if, if there was anything you needed or if I can help you with anything, just know I'm still here. Um, or, you know, I'm, I'm here and would love to, to chat or catch up. And I think a lot of times if you, if you put that in a handwritten note and send it to someone, it's going to catch their attention and they might even just set it aside and say, yeah, I did want to talk with, you know, Stephanie or, or April and, um, I should, I should give her a call or shoot her an email. Um, yeah, I need to be better about that. Maybe they've been meaning to do that in a while and they just, they just haven't. So, um, that's an idea too, is just to sit down and write a couple handwritten notes and stick them in the mail. Cause you never know, you know, where that might go to. Yeah, totally. So yeah, I think that's all I had. Oh, um, uh, speaking about the catalog. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, just real quick with the, another memory jogger. And I think we might've mentioned this in the last call, but, um, as a reminder, you can go through the catalog. Um, and especially after convention, because the word is out that there are going to be um, new products that are introduced at convention. So that, especially having a new catalog, will be a really great way to approach people. But just going through that, like page by page, um, you know, just do like five pages a day even, if you can go through or do that on your power hour. And put a sticky note on each page and write people's names that come to mind for a product because that really gives you a good reason to contact people too. If, if you know a little bit about them um, to be like, you know, I saw this product as I was looking through the catalog and um, it really made me think of you because I think it might help you with blah, blah, blah. Um, or I know you've been struggling with such and such. So if you write those people's names down, it's, it's nice to really have a reason in the, in the background. Um, to contact people, it doesn't make it feel so awkward. Um, sometimes, if you're if you're just contacting them out of the blue, but go through page by page and write down people's names of who you think it might benefit, and you'd be surprised, I think, at um, the names that you come up with or the people that come to your mind just by seeing a product. Um, and plus, during that time, you're educating yourself on all of our products as well, which is very helpful in the meantime. So you kind of kill two birds with one stone when you do that. Yeah. And I think that is key because I think a lot of times um, we forget myself included how many supplements and how many beauty items and skincare and everything that there really is. Mm -hmm. I think it's easy to get stuck on vitalizer life shake, which I know are key, but like I've had some people who are like, well, do you have anything for allergies or anything for my stress or anything for blah, blah, blah. And I also, something my mom told me, and I still do to this day, is if you don't know the answer, um, you say, you know what? I don't know that right now, but I'm going to get back with you and, yeah. and because it's okay. I know Aaron and I were talking about that. Like Shackley, one reason why they have all these tools, which which apparently there's going to be more or something greater and better, which I can't even imagine what it could be. That's going to be um, introduced at conference as far as like helping us run our businesses. Um, they give us so much stuff. It's just a matter of remembering that it's in the back office under new tools where you message April and I, we each have a ton of stuff saved that we've gotten from people or We've already saved from the back office, but you know, you don't have to know the answer and it's just being okay saying, you know, I don't know that right now I'll get back with you. And then, um, and then you send them the stuff and it's yeah. just like with the catalog. I always have a catalog right next to me in K. I mean, nowadays I feel like I have done more via text, email and messenger. I've had like a handful or two of phone calls recent, you know, in the last few months, which I wish was more because I personally like talking on the phone better. The last few people who wanted to talk a ton of details, I said, you know what, let's just, can we just talk on the phone? Cause I think it's easier. Um, but I always have my stuff next to me and I tell them like, okay, give me a second. I'm going to look this up because 
I mean, not every person who's in Shackley has, I mean, people, you're not supposed to have a degree in medicine to have your own Shackley business. Some people do. <laughs> right. But like, that's why they have this memory jogger. Who do I know who is a florist who might be interested in Shackley and never know. Maybe she wants to be a distributor and she's not going to know anything probably, but you don't have to. So, yeah, yeah, not let the number of products that we have, because I think it can be a little bit overwhelming. Yeah. Um, but when you're slowly, you know, going through things and making yourself aware of them and learning about them, it will make you feel more empowered to, um, to know about them. And like Stephanie said, you don't have to know every product we have or what we do. If someone has a problem that they ask you about, like Stephanie said, you can say, you know, I, I really don't know, but I will check. Yeah, and that and going back to Martha Wilmore, that's one thing I loved about her. She has tons of brochures and flyers that educate. She calls them brochures that educate and sell because um, I feel like I bought a bunch. I have them right here, which I need to give you some of these, April. Like I have one on digestive disorders, and she talks all about like malabsorption being a common problem, malnutrition therefore happens. Um, or talks about burping, belching, belching, bloating. So she talks about all these physiological things, what can cause it, how you can help with digestion as far as diet choices, digestion, absorption, and then goes into how you can help your digestion from things like avoiding white flour, eat 50% of your diet raw. Everything is not shackly until you get to the end. And she gives recommendations. Um, Again, these are just recommendations she's come up with, but they're based on why certain products were made by Shackley to address certain things. So it gives recommendations on Shackley products to use that might help. So, so having these, which I have a bunch, and then I'm thinking maybe after conference, depending on what comes out, I'd like to buy more. So April and I will both have these, but it's like, it's all about educating on what's going on and then giving stuff that might help. We don't diagnose or treat, obviously, but I think um, that's a good, you know, I think people like information like that too. And it's yeah. that we have someone involved in Shackley who's been in the medical nutritionist field for so long that she's found ways to combine stuff that works. Yeah. yeah. So with that, our 20 minutes turned into 40. We're really good at doing that. We are. <laughs> But I hope this information was was helpful because honestly, every time we do these, it's even though Stephanie and I are doing them, it's helpful to me. Yeah, me too. I mean, I'm looking at this list like I'm looking at this list thinking this is the perfect timing because I do. I think I'm right now focusing so much on my current tribe of people that I've not really reached out to many folks who don't know Shackley. Like right, I'm right. doing so many follow-ups on people I've already contacted that I need to get like some fresh perspective. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I don't know. So I'm going to be curious where this memory jogger takes me. Yeah. So I don't know what we'll do on the next one. April and I can figure that out, but yeah, but yeah. All right. So I think that's it. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Bye.